working with dates and times in any programming language can be a huge hassle. There's so many ways to mess up because there's different time formats, there's time zones, you have to account for daylight savings time, and a lot of other things. There's a lot of ways you can get it wrong. I'll show you everything you need to know about working with dates and times in Python to make it easy so you can feel confident anytime you have to work with them in Python. Let's start with how to get the current time. Before we get the current time, though, we need to know what format we want to get it in. In Python, there's two main ways of dealing with time. There's the Unix timestamp and there's the Python date time object. Now let's look at the differences between those two first. The Unix timestamp is the number of seconds since the Unix epoch, which is January 1st, 1970 UTC time zone. It's usually an integer, but it can be a floating point number, a decimal, if the system has millisecond resolution or greater. Typically an integer though. It's convenient, it's easy to store, it doesn't take up much memory, it's easy to compare, and it's easy to work with. The drawback is that it's hard to read as a human because it's just a number. And you'll see the slide here, this is an example of it. It's just a long number. The only other thing to keep in mind is that it's always in UTC. To get the Unix timestamp, you have to use the time package. So I'm gonna say from time, import time. The function name is time. And if you call time, you're going to get the Unix timestamp. In this case, my system has resolution greater than a second. It looks like uh, milliseconds and greater. So that's why I have a floating point number. And if I save that, I'll call it, uh, I'll just call it T for short. So if we check the type of the timestamp, we can see it's just a float. So it's just a regular old number, nothing special about it. The date time object in Python is part of the standard library, and it's an object that stores more detailed information. It's got information about the year, the month, the day, the time, the time zone, and more. It also has a bunch of useful methods like converting to and from a Unix timestamp and there's also it's worth noting there's a date and a time object and then there's the date time object so you can use them separately if you just need date or time but i'm only going to be talking about the combination date time object here if you want to get a date time object from a string there's a function called stir p time let me show you that so from date time import date time and then there's a function called stir p time. This stands for string parse time. So you're going to parse a string that has a time in it. For example, if we just said 2018 06 18, uh, June 18th, 2020, uh, we can give it that string, but we also have to tell it what the format is. So we have to explicitly tell it to expect it in year, month, day format. And then it'll parse it properly. Similarly, you can provide a different format, like if we were going to provide the time as well, then we could update our format to match this time. So we're going to do percent %s colon percent %m percent colon percent %s. Now, now it knows, okay, uh, day, month, e uh, year, month, day, and then hour, and then minutes, and then the seconds. It stores the seconds as well, but it looks like it's just zero, so there's nothing there. So that's how you can get the time. And then let's, uh, let's just store it as a variable so we can reuse it. And then if we wanted, we can get the ISO format or we could get this, the common time format. Or if we wanted, we could uh, use stir f time to output it as some kind of special format, like if we just wanted the year. Another common thing you'll need to do is calculate differences between times or get an older time or a time in the future. For example, what time was it 24 hours ago? Or what time is it 30 days from now? And you can do this using a convenient object called time delta. So that's a part of the date time package. So starting fresh from date time, import date time so we can get the, the current time. And then the other object we want or the function is time delta. Then for example, we can say three days ago equals now, 
minus a time delta of days equals three. And if you, if you read the help info down here, you can see there's days, seconds, microseconds, milliseconds, minutes, hours, and weeks. So you can find a time delta for whatever you want pretty easily. And then if we inspect three days ago, we can see that is June 15th, which is three days ago from June 18th. And likewise, if we wanted to do a time in the future, we could just add a time instead of subtracting it. If you ever subtract or add two date time objects from each other, then you're going to get another date time object. I guess you can't add them, but this is more applicable when you're sub subtracting. Most notably, I'll give you an example here. Uh, we'll say, we'll, like if you're benchmarking something, you want to get the start time some, uh, before it starts, and then you want to do something, and you want to, like already I'm just talking, so it's going to take a couple seconds. So then we can say end time equals now. Then we can say start time minus end time. And what we'll get is a time delta. And we can see it's negative one days and so many seconds. Um, but what I want to do here is I'll save that value. I'll call it the, the diff. Make sure I got it. Yeah, so then we can say diff.total seconds. And that'll give us the total seconds. It's negative because I, I added it backwards or subtracted it backwards. It should be end time minus start time for everybody who caught that. Quit laughing at me. So when you have, you want to do your delta this way, you want to do end time minus start time. Uh, then you can get your delta. We'll call that diff equals underscore now. So now we've got a delta of eight seconds. Now, if it was several days, and instead of getting it as days, you just wanted to see it as seconds, you can use total seconds, and that's a function. And then you'll get purely seconds. And that's convenient if you want to do some calculations where you don't need to take into account days. So to sum everything up, there's two main types of time that you can work with, the Unix timestamp and the Python date time object. And we looked at how to convert between both of them. The Unix timestamp is always going to be in UTC and is the format that I recommend you use to store your time in the database or wherever. Only apply the time zones when you present it to the user so that you're always storing and working with UTC time. If you have any questions or there's things that I didn't cover, please let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoy the video. If you prefer the written tutorial, you can check out this link to devdungeon.com to the article working with dates and times in Python 3, where you've got pretty much the same information and the code examples available to you.